the people that uh, I have been engaged with. Um, that's what's made it all worthwhile. That was the point of it, uh, to be in community with them, sharing uh, their lives and my families in with their families. Uh, that's the part that you remember, those wonderful stories of your, your times together, good and bad. And that has been, I think, the gift of the gospel and, and that we experience sharing the love of Christ together in that community, whichever church we were in, and to enjoy the love that that engenders and in good times and in bad. What I think of most is that when I entered the conference, there were just a handful of women. And when I look over my years of service, I note how extraordinary the influence of those women have been on me. Starting with uh, Joe Biggerstaff in, in Farmer's Branch, Victoria Davidson in East Dallas, Linda Brown in my North Haven years, uh, Catherine Lyle, Georgine Blanton, my last three pastors, Marty Soper, Amy Sparr, and Martha Valencia, and then my current colleagues at TMF, Lisa Greenwood, Carol Montgomery, and Blair Thompson White. And I just say, thank God for the change in the annual conference, for uh, this extraordinary set of pastors, and for their influence on me. When I've had the opportunity to really engage with the community and know the community and have them to know the church, um, that has been a great joy. When I was at Warren one time, we had the car wash, there really wasn't a car wash, drug dealers and stuff. I would go over there and, you know, do ministry and let them know about the church. This one homeless guy was there. He said, oh, we know you, you are our pastor. You said we can come anytime. These socks that I have on, uh, I was hungry, you didn't have money, but you gave me these socks. And so connecting to the community and connecting the church to the community has been uh, one of my greatest joys. Talk about my wife, her name, her name was Denise Johnson Stovall. She just passed away about five and a half years ago. And she was not only my college sweetheart, but she has been with through every, every step of my ministry. So it's not, a, it has not been my ministry. It's been our ministry. To the day she died, she was faithful to the church. She uh, used to be the president of the North Texas Conference United Methodist Women. And she was just faithful to me as a wife, as a friend, and as a partner in the ministry. I think the most important thing is to reverse the question. So for example, when we think about those who may be visiting our congregations, I'm afraid that sometimes our default question is to, to those visitors, what can you do for us? How soon can you get on a committee? How, how soon are you gonna start writing checks to help us pay the bills? And we just simply have to reverse the question to what can we do to help you grow in Christ? The best way that I know to do that is for the church to do an assessment, to uh, learn where they're strong and where they're weak. And we did that with the Black Church Initiative. Um, it's hard work, but each member of the church would take an assessment to see um, what they really like, what they want to do with the community and with the church. And areas where they're strong, matching that up with the community, I would encourage um, churches to do that assessment and then assess and get to know who actually lives in the community that is their mission field and bring those two together. Nowadays, churches tend to be so large, we mega churches really, and we don't even have a lot of small churches, but small churches are just as relevant as large churches. And I think that now, we need to reverse the trend of thinking that every church has to be a bigger church. We need to go back to small church ministry. And that's very important because everyone needs a church and a pastor they can relate to. Be creative, be bold, be experimental, risk failure. 
Uh, if you're going to fail, fail gloriously in the in the effort. Uh, don't be hindered and don't be encumbered by the idea of a programming per se. Uh, let people have that voice that says, hey, what would happen if we did this? And experiment and try. Yes, th some things will go awry, things will go wrong, but the, the really fun part is, I believe that there's a dynamic of the Holy Spirit that when people do that and they're open to that prompting, amazing, uh, wonderful things. But the issue for a lot of folks is, is it can border on chaos. You've got to be willing to trust the Holy Spirit for that. Uh, there will be great failures, but there will be successes like you couldn't imagine. Know the Lord, know God's Word, and love the Lord with your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And as you really know the Lord, and love the Lord with all that you have, you are more concerned about making disciples because you will love the community where you are. Know his community. And I would say, once you love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and strength, the worries that you have about will your salary make ends meet for your family? Will you be able to pay your student loans? That's not a concern anymore because God always provides. Love the Lord with your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Put the Lord first in everything that you do. Your ministry will be successful. The first one is uh, don't confuse the institution with the church. Uh, I have loved the church, all my ministry. Not always loved the institution. The institution itself can be uh, fraught with faults and failures like anything else. But the church, that which, that which Christ called, um, I have always loved that. And I've always thought that that should have the priority, is looking at the church, that redemptive fellowship as Wesley called it. The second piece uh, of advice is simply this, and I'm gonna quote Dietrich Bonhoeffer here, forgive me, it's a the theologian thing. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said that the first and greatest service that we afford others in our community is to listen. To listen. He goes on to say that, that God first gave us the word that we might listen to God and then God responds by lending an ear and that we show God's love to the others first by listening to them. And I think it, that's, that's one of the things I would encourage us all to do, but I think particularly for those who are fairly new in the ministry. Be thankful. Remember where you come from, what you've gone through, the people you have connected with in your ministry. In all things, continue to praise God for everything you have experienced in your ministry. I spent far too much of my ministry being inattentive to my health and well-being. It was that lie that said, uh, I have to give all of myself away uh, and uh, I just don't have time uh, for self-care. And so my word is, you are worth it. Um, and so eating well and regular exercise and don't be ashamed to see a therapist and, and rely on a spiritual guide or director, maybe a coach. And, and I have to say one more thing, because when I went over this with my wife, she said, yeah, and learn to say no. I'm going to do the introduction, which nobody does. Some trails are happy, and some trails are blue. What counts is how you ride the trail, and this trail is just for you. Happy trails to you, until we meet again. Happy trails to you, keep smiling until then. Who cares about when we're together, just sing a song and bring sunny weather. Happy trails to you. Give me a again.